and welcome back to our talking about uh, the power of modern data mining tools. So far we looked at uh, multivariate adaptive regression splines that kind of expands conventional linear regression into the point where uh, it builds a collection of localized linear regressions. So now let's move on to the next subject which is uh, the concept of uh, regression trees. Now when we talk about trees there are many different ways to introduce uh, those trees and uh, interestingly enough trees typically arrived at uh, the concept of classification modeling which is a whole other vast topic that one day hopefully I will be able to address. Uh, but by and large uh, the way I will introduce a regression tree is a recursive uh, piecewise constant uh, fit to the, uh, in order to identify underlying uh, response surface. So now here is a, a little slide where uh, I will highlight what's going on. So suppose I have the original uh, uh, data set here. So this is my original data here and I have observations 1, 2, 3, etc. Now there is a, some kind of uh, distribution of my target in that original data set. So this is my Y variable and I can fit basically a Y bar which is say this is Y bar and let's call it Y bar in the parent node as the average in my overall data set. Now suppose I'm looking for a way to partition my data set based on a univariate rule, say variable x less than 1.5, all records but satisfy that condition go on the left and I'll have observations 1, 3, 4, 7, whatever. All records where x is greater than 1.5 go on the right, so I'll get records basically 2, 5, 6, etc. Okay, so therefore uh, I expect that the distribution of Y in the part of the data on the left will change, so I'll get one distribution here, and I can fit Y bar on the left as the predicted response, and the same happens on the right. Suppose the distribution looks like this, so I can fit Y bar on the right. Okay, so now depending on what kind of split point I picked, I expect these Y left and Y right to differ. And the ideally, I want to pick a split point such that the distribution on the left is as far away uh, from the distribution on the right as possible. Now, one way to formally quantify it is to say, okay, in the parent node, uh, you have this Y bar overall is your prediction. So you can calculate the sum of squared errors around y bar in the parent node. Okay, so this is the sum of squared errors in the parent node. Now likewise, on the left, you're only looking at the points that are in the left side subpopulation and you calculate the sum of squared errors around the y bar on the left. Likewise, on the right, you have only points that are gathered on the right and you calculate the sum of squared errors on the right. So you're replacing one model that predicts overall y bar by a sub, by, by a, a kind of more flexible model that predicts y bar left on those observations and y bar right on those observations and therefore the overall improvement or the reduction in the lack of fit is essentially the sum of squared errors in the parent minus sum of squared errors on the left and sum of squared errors on the right. Of course, if uh, the uh, rule that you picked to, to divide the population into two subpopulations is wrong or bad, let's say it's based on a random flip, then you expect this improvement to be close to zero. Now mathematically it's always guaranteed to be positive just because the nature of these sums are constructed. Now what's more interesting though is that you can also show that the same improvement can be simply calculated as a scaled squared difference of mean on the left and mean on the right. So you don't even have to worry about all of those individual sum of squares. All you need to do is calculate how mean is 
uh, calculate the mean on the left, mean on the right, then take the difference, square it, and normalize by the number of records in the parent node, number of records on the left partition, number of records on the right partition. Therefore, this delta, the improvement, becomes your key storage criterion, and every population or a subpopulation, you can scan all available rules induced by all these univariate split points in order to identify the max of the improvement and therefore pick that corresponding split point as the right guiding split of the population. Once you divided this parent node into two subnodes, you can now proceed by looking for the best split on the left and identify the corresponding split that produces the best resulting improvement. And you can separately search for the next best split on the right that maximizes the corresponding improvements on the left and on the right. And continue in such fashion until you've come up with a structure that represents uh, some kind of tree. Now, what is important about this tree is that at every node you are making a constant prediction. So you have a piecewise constant model. It's as if you've constructed some kind of multi-dimensional staircase uh, that spans multiple directions. So you could have uh, x1, you could have x2, and you could have all these other different uh, configurations out there. And this is, my friends, how the classical way to introduce a regression tree, and let's see how we can uh, work with that. So I'm going to switch back to the SPM software. So far we've seen classical regression and Mars. Now it's time to introduce regression tree. So I'm going back to my model setup, and instead of Mars, I'm picking the CART engine here. Now CART uses, uh, again, same setup, MV as the target, all of these other variables as predictors. Uh, on the testing side, uh, I'll just use uh, tenfold cross-validation. Um, even though I could basically use uh, no testing, but uh, again, we, we talk about it in uh, some other parts. I don't want to spend too much time pointing out individual parts. Uh, and you also usually want to set up certain limits. For example, I will require all of the internal parent nodes to have at least 60 records and all terminal records to have at least 20 records so that we don't have to deal with way too many nodes. And then I work in the regression mode, I click start, and it proceeds by doing what I've just described in the slides, and comes back with this tree structure. Now the overall it identified the 14 node 3 as the optimal model, and as you can see, what it does here when you click in the root node and go under uh, box plots. What you can see in the parent node, you have your target variable. We've seen that uh, MV spreading between 10 and 50, with the average about 21.2. And uh, on the left-hand side, as the result of applying a single split based on house size, and remember, 6.9 is within that uh, 7.5, I mean the 6.5 to 7.5 range that we have identified in our modest plots. But when you look at this split, the result of it is that now you have this box plot on the left and this box plot on the right. So when you think about it, if after scanning for all available splits, all available individual split points, CART has determined that it's RM less than 6.9 for 1 that gives you the best improvement or the best separation of target distributions between the left child and the right child. And then the same process continues. Here on the left, uh, again, there is a separation like this. Uh, here on the right, there is an RM that's used again and a corresponding separation like that, and so on and so forth. So if you color code nodes according to means, what you will see is that this node has the highest predicted mean. And when you click on it, again, look at these node stats, you see that the entire sample is here, but uh, the rules 
which is uh, Rm greater than 7.4, not surprisingly, isolated this highest, most expensive segment. Uh, and there's only one outlier here that for some reason doesn't have a very expensive homes. Likewise, here you have another node. When you click on it, it's at the bottom of the original spread. And the rules that lead there are not just based on RM alone, but it's also the contribution of poverty rate, crime rate, and pollution rate. So basically it says if you have small homes with very high poverty rate, crime rate, and pollution rates uh, all together, then you will arrive at the lowest priced uh, 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 populations of homes. And that's kind of, those are the two extremes. All of the remaining nodes give you something in the middle. So, for example, if you click on this one, you've identified uh, a node, uh, a collection of homes that's somewhat above the average. And the rules leading there is that you have a low RM, but you also have a very low uh, uh, poverty rate in those neighborhoods, and so on and so forth. When you click on the summary here and look at the terminal nodes, this is the overall box plot that shows the result of applying a regression tree strategy to uh, this uh, specific population of homes and starting from the highest priced segment all the way down to the lowest priced segment and all of the intermediate ones. And that is essentially how the conventional regression tree approaches uh, a regression problem. So what you've learned from here is that in addition to generalizing conventional linear regression by constructing piecewise linear models, you can actually do the same thing using trees and simplify the underlying structure by constructing piecewise constant models. So instead of, uh, so you, you basically found a way to segment the underlying population into a set of mutually exclusive smaller segments such that within each segment the overall prediction is a constant and as you go from segment to segment the prediction changes by a fixed amount. In a way this is a kind of uh, a data-driven way to identify some kind of ANOVA decomposition of the underlying population into a set of uh, smaller subpopulations with the significant uh, effects as you go from one subpopulation to another. Now, what is the overall performance of this tree? According to this relative error here, it shows 0.283, which is roughly uh, an equivalent of uh, something like 72% R-squared. So on one hand, it looks like the performance is not that great because even a simple linear model produced uh, essentially a performance that was like 74% R-squared. But this is somewhat misleading because we are having a very simple model here. It's a piecewise constant model. So it's not going to have a very high predictive power because you are forcing all of your predictions to be constant uh, within each segment. But it has a very nice interpretational power because you have all of those individual segments that you can now describe as uh, independent standalone entities. So as far as the insights go, as far as say uh, uh, some kind of marketing uh, conclusions that can be driven from here are quite spectacular because you found some very simple set of rules that drive underlying localized segmentation structure which is a gold mine for all types of marketing research or just the general understanding. Now we usually run regression trees not in order to have the highest predictive models but in order to understand the quick and dirty situation of what's happening in the data set, what are the key driving forces, what are the key insights. Sometimes we also use regression trees to pinpoint different uh, problems with your data because data is, not, is never coming clean. There are always mistakes, errors, problems, issues. Now you run a regression tree and if it shows you that there is a, some kind of uh, relationship that doesn't make any sense, well, instead of thinking that the software is wrong, you go ahead and uh, revisit the data set itself and maybe there's a problem in the data set. And 
we have run into it over and over again because mistakes do happen and the regression tree has a very nice and powerful capability to extract that signal and throw it into your face and then let you decide whether it makes sense or not. But the drawback is that the single tree will not be able to give you the highest predictive accuracy. For that, you would need to go into the next level of development and uh, look at the collections of trees. So instead of building a single tree, now we are going to build multiple trees, multiple trees combined together as the end result having this large group of many different trees we will end up with uh, more powerful models and that will be the topic of our next segment.